put something into your home, and there is evil attached to it. You need to get rid of it. Now. <laughs> There is a house in downtown Ventura that is reportedly very haunted. It's a huge old house. My sister met a woman who used to live there. It has several bedrooms spread over four levels. I'm not sure what the architectural type is called, so I'll just describe it as an old wood frame house with an antique ornate style. Picturesque, set on the foothill overlooking downtown and the ocean and the Channel Islands. When I lived in the area, the house was vacant. During my frequent late night walks, I'd sometimes sneak up the two dozen front stairs and peer in the windows or walk around back. Occasionally I'd bring a date up there to fool around on the porch swing. It was vacant for a long time. My sister told me the house was haunted and once when she was visiting in the house, a floor lamp suddenly slid across the living room, apparently of its own volition. Startled, she looked at her friend and the woman who lived there, and she kind of shrugged and said that things like that occurred frequently. They would often hear noises from the upper floor. There was another tenant who resided up there, and sometimes they would hear noises, like someone talking or walking around, only to find out later that the tenant was not home. She eventually moved out, and sometime later, I met her and asked her about that house. She confirmed the lamp story and said that many things happened there and that she moved out because of them. She hated living there. She said, let me show you something. She pulled out her phone and flipped to a photograph of a young man sitting on a sofa in front of a dark picture window or maybe glass sliding doors. She said that it was her son on the couch. The photo was just kind of a typical random snapshot of a kid sitting on a couch. Also, in the photo was a large swirl of white smoke to the right of the kid. It looked like cigarette smoke that had drifted in front of the lens. Except when I looked closer, I was startled and frightened by what I noticed about it. There was a very clearly defined face in the smoke, not a human face but one of a creature with an elongated muzzle and head shape like a canine. The mouth was open, showing large, sharp, pointy teeth. The eyes were fierce and appeared to be looking into the camera. I truly hate to say this because I tend to roll my eyes at stories like this, but it is best described as a dragon or demon face. I don't believe in demons. The image was unmistakable and gave me chills and goosebumps. The woman said that she hadn't seen anything, but when she took the photo, that it was just a casual snapshot of her son while they were sitting and watching movies. She managed to get the landlord to reluctantly let her out of the lease after she told him everything that happened there. Eventually they found tenants. There were old cars and beat up motorcycles out front and junk stored on the porches and balconies so they didn't appear to be neat, clean and orderly tenants and the house looked in need of repairs and maintenance. I never met the new residents, but I wonder if they had any experiences in that creepy, old house. I had a long talk with my dad last night about the house I grew up in. I lived there from about age 6 to 15. I'm 21 now. Apparently the previous owner was a recluse and mentally ill. He chose to end his life with a shotgun in my bedroom, next to the window. There's a bleached spot there on the hardwood floor that I had always covered up with a chair. His brother would check on him periodically, but this time he didn't for about three weeks then came over and found him dead. My dad found this out after we moved in. He said a police officer came up to him when he was doing yard work and said, don't let the history of this place scare you. 
It's a beautiful property. And my dad was like, what? Needless to say, I'm creeped out. I don't remember ever feeling unsafe in the house, but the lock on my door had locked itself numerous times during the first year we lived there. I vividly remember being locked inside there with my friend one day, and firefighters had to come and pull us out the window. After that, my father just straight up took the doorknob off, so I had no doorknob growing up. There were also crosses above my sister and I's door that I never really questioned, but apparently my dad had a priest come over and bless the doorway. This affected my dad a lot. One day he was doing roof work on a ladder right outside my window, perfectly in control. When the ladder folded and slipped sideways and he fell 10 feet and almost died. And when my parents got divorced and my mum took my sister and I to live elsewhere, my dad lived there alone for two years. He said it got so disturbing he finally had to move. He said that when he came home from work at night through the basement, it would reek of smoke. The man was a smoker when alive. The scent was so strong, he was convinced on several occasions that someone had broken in. But then my dad would go upstairs and come back down as a test, and the smell would be gone. I'm just a little spooked finding out that I lived in a room where this had happened, especially since I had my own attempt in that same room. Just kind of a mind blow. Does anyone else have like positive stories of this kind of spirit moving on after or something like that? I'm having a hard time processing all of this and really hope that the man is at rest now. This is a story that I've written and deleted two or three times now. I have very bad memories associated with the house, so it's hard for me to write about. This telling is about something odd that happened many years after I lived in the house. I'll omit the bulk of the background. I lived in a 1900 farmhouse in northern Maine, in Aroostook County, along the border with Canada. The house was a small two-story clapboard-sided farmhouse. The central heat was a giant handcrafted metal stove. It was large enough to fit a log a foot in diameter and three feet long and sat in the middle of the dirt floored basement. The stove was so airtight that you could throw in several chunks of split hardwood and dog it down tight. Then you crack the air vent just a tiny bit and the fire would smolder all night with heat drifting up through the vents and ducts. It was the main heat in the house, although there were two additional cast iron wood stoves. I lived there with my father and his girlfriend. My father would spend a lot of time working on the property, clearing brush. He also worked on scraping the peeling paint and applying a fresh new coat, although he refused to invest money in the house, so many of his repairs were low quality and incomplete. After I moved away, I stayed away for over 15 years. One day, my wife and I were staying at a hotel a few hours away and found ourselves with a free day to randomly explore. We ended up driving back to the area of that house and decided to make it our destination. The area hadn't changed much. The area is very sparse with a lot of dense trees and large grassy yards and fields, farms here and there. We turned off US Highway 1 onto the road named Wilcox Settlement Road. The house was maybe a quarter mile down it. The sun was low in the late afternoon sky a bit above the trees. I pulled up at the end of the driveway, or dooryard as the locals call it, and stopped in the road. The house was a wreck, in much worse shape than when my father had owned it. There were a few beat up cars parked by the house. There were barrels and scrap wood and random old junk all around the yard and on the porch. Much of the siding had been removed, exposing mylar backed foam insulation boards that had been pressed between the studs in the exterior wall. There was an old, dented, rusty pickup truck parked close to the road where we sat idling. My foot on the brake, my wife and I sat gaping at the creepy old dilapidated house. 
The yard was overgrown and the brush had reclaimed most of what my father had laboriously cleared all those years ago. Movement caught my eye in the dimming light. A waving hand. There was a man standing on the other side of the old pickup truck and he was slowly waving his arm, beckoning us toward him. He was a large overweight man, late thirties to mid forties, dressed in a dirty work coat. His mouth was open in a gap tooth smile and he stood there, still except for his upraised right arm, slowly beckoning us to pull into the driveway. I was frightened. First of all, we didn't see him initially, so it caught us off guard to have him standing as close as he was. Secondly, the way he stood there, watching us, beckoning, reminded me of a scene from a backwards horror film. The man's smile seemed to be a cunning veneer of harmlessness, belied by a bleary, cold glint of greed or worse. I instinctively floored the accelerator and sped away. I hate that house. It was a very bad place. I felt like it was stained with bleak sadness, fear, and loneliness. I'm 23 now. This started when I was three or four. Everything that happened that night, I remember like it was yesterday. The memory so vivid and forever in my mind. The second floor of my house at the time was really just a small landing with three bedrooms and a bathroom off it. Immediately at the top and to your right was my bedroom. The bathroom adjacent to the stairs, then my sister's bedroom and my parents' bedroom. My mum would put my sister and I to bed at seven o'clock every night. I always had issues falling asleep as a kid, but would eventually drift off. My bedroom had a closet next to the door and next to that, two windows with a dresser sitting between them, with my bed pushed against the wall, foot end of the bed near the door. One night not unlike any other, we're put to bed and I finally find sleep after a few hours of just lying there, only to wake up some hours later. It was about two or three in the morning. I rolled over to scan my room. I've always been afraid of the dark. So the room was lit up and my nightlight was plugged in at the end of the bed. Standing in front of the window furthest from me, near the closet, I saw what I thought at the time was an angel, quite literally glittering gold in front of my eyes, standing at least seven feet tall, staring out the window. My movement must have grabbed its attention because immediately its head turned to look at me. There were no facial features except for a strong defined jawline, though faceless. It wasn't like a freaky facelessness. At this point, I was more curious than afraid. Then it started to yell at me. It kept telling me to shut up. The yelling quickly turned to screaming and I freaked. I was one giant goosebump and I got up from bed, opened my door and looked into the lit hallway. My parents always left that light on at night in case my sister or I needed something or got scared in the middle of the night. Almost in slow motion, I noticed the air felt too still. Something was off. Before I could process anything, I took one step forward and out of the bathroom shoots this thing. It gets right in front of my face screaming a blood curdling scream that still echoes in my ear to the day. The face of this thing was just gray and sinister. Eyes completely blacked out, skin cracked, no lips, just a black hollow hole with it, the screams coming from it. Long black hair flying around as if there were a fan switched on behind it and I lost it. I screamed so loud, I swear the entire house shook. I barged into my parents' room, tears streaming uncontrollably down my face. My mum looked scared and confused. My dad, just terrified. I don't remember what happened after that. 
I'm sure I told my parents what happened and ended up sleeping with them for the next few weeks. Growing up, I asked my mom about that night, and she explained how I barged in crying, rambling off some story about an angel or something. Today, I don't know what it was. My dad on the other hand never said much about it, and instead started warning me to stay away from Ouija boards and told me some freaky stories about things that had happened to him. As my parents divorced, growing up things got worse with respect to what I was being exposed to. My dad would show me scary pop up videos and play creepy music. I was six or seven at this point. Safe to say I hated going to my dad's because I thought whatever I'd seen that night was somehow connected to him. Eventually my mum remarried. We moved and things were okay. Then I decided to stop seeing my dad completely for unrelated reasons as I was nine years old at this time. And that's when things started again. The air was ridiculously heavy all the time. I hated sleeping in my room. I always felt like there was something at the end of my bed just watching me. I tried to ignore it. For nine years, constantly living in fear, we moved out of that house to somewhere around the corner. And once my mum and stepdad divorced, that way we wouldn't have to switch schools as I was about to graduate high school and my sister still had one more year. I still had access to the house as my ex-stepdad still lived there. They were using my old bedroom for storage and always kept the blinds closed as I had while living there. One morning when everyone in my old house was at work, my friend and I decided to sesh in the garage quickly. We had the okay from the ex-stepdad so long as we weren't driving anywhere afterwards. We walked through the front door, through the foyer to the garage, and got settled. I could already feel the extra 10 pounds on my chest, and I really wanted to make this quick. I had previously spoken with my friend about what I was feeling in this house, as we had been friends for years at this point, but never gave her much context. Not even five minutes into the sesh, we heard the footsteps above the garage, i.e. my old bedroom. My entire body went cold. My friend immediately looked at me and we waited for another second and heard them again. This time, like a stomp type running around the room. We said, screw it. Packed up and got the hell out of there. I locked up and walked down the driveway completely freaked, trying to push the thousands of thoughts running through my mind out my head. Then, my friend let out a tiny shriek. I turned back to immediately ask her what was wrong. They were doing some work. I thought she could have stepped on a rogue nail or something, but the horror was written on her face, and I looked up at the window but the blinds were closed. I asked her again what was up, she said for whatever reason she felt like she needed to look up to my old bedroom. She said the blinds were open in the window looking down on us. And I quote her words, this thing with black hair and black eyes and cracked skin and just a hollow black hole for a mouth was staring down. She said it so fast terror was oozing from every word she said. That's when she burst into tears. And so did I. I was too freaked out to tell her what happened when I was a kid, and I didn't want to scare her more. I suggested we get the hell out of there. Since then, nothing's happened. I recently traveled to Rome, specifically the Vatican, and got a blessed St. Michael pendant for extra measure, seeing as whatever it was followed me in silence throughout the years. The thing hasn't bothered me other than showing up in a very specific nightmare I've had every eight to 10 years since my first encounter. If this thing is still on my tail, I'll be due for a nightmare within the next year. I'll start this off with a little bit of backstory and important information. I'm a 23 year old female. I now have two kids, but at the time of this story, I only had one, a two-year-old boy. We lived in a small two-bedroom house. It was my son and I, my fiancé, 
and our two cats. Now, I grew up in a small town with my grandparents on their farm. The property they lived on was infested with bad energy, evil spirits, demons, etc. I don't know why they stayed in that house so long. In the early 2000s, their barn burnt to the ground, killing many of their horses. It was ruled spontaneous combustion. It was assumed that there was some tightly baled hay that must have had bits of moisture in the middle and caused the fire. They rebuilt in the following years. As I said, this house and property was evil. Shadow figures, horrible nightmares, weird animal deaths and so much more. I got out as soon as I could and years later I ended up in the house that this story takes place in. It was the summer of 2019. We had just bought a pool for our backyard and we were so excited to use it. We filled it up that day and got a text from my grandparents later on letting me know that they were moving about six hours away and that the nice California king size tempur bed from the guest room was up for grabs. I told them I'd love it and so we went to grab it, totally interrupting our swimming plans but that was okay. Bringing something from that house into mine was the worst mistake I ever made. That night we woke up to my two year old son screaming from his room. We ran in to find him sitting up in his bed, pointing to the front of his room. That's where we found a puddle. A three foot by two foot puddle of water on his floor. It was summer. There was no rain, but we checked the roof and walls anyways for any type of leak. There was none. We checked him to make sure he didn't pee. He didn't. I smelt it. Gross, I know. It wasn't cat pee. There was absolutely no explanation. He slept in our room that night. The next morning we seen our bathroom sink was clogged. My fiancé turned off the main water line under the sink so that no one could turn the water on causing an accidental flood. A couple of hours later we headed to the store to get stuff to unclog it. When we got back home, I seen water coming from the bathroom, flooding the hallway. Both sink handles were turned on and water was pouring from the sink. We checked our security system. There's no way somebody broke in. That's when I started freaking out. I didn't even understand why all of a sudden this stuff was happening. Fast forward a couple of days later, we're headed out to the pool, finally. As my son heads towards the door, he looks up in the corner of the ceiling, immediately drops to his knees and covers his eyes and starts screaming. He told my fiance he saw a dead girl crawling on the ceiling. I flipped, and we left the house for the day. Three days later, we had some friends over. We were drinking and hanging out. My friend had an air mattress on my son's bedroom floor and we decided we needed to head to bed. All the lights and TVs were off. 15 minutes later, the TV turns on, and the song, Drowning by Kodak, I think, starts playing. Listen to it if you haven't. The first 30-ish seconds are what played. I went out to turn it off, and the remote was dead. So no, a cat didn't step on it. Nothing. I started putting pieces together. I called a medium and she told us to take the pool down immediately. That either something was trying to warn us that something bad was going to happen at the pool, or something was going to try and drown my son or pets in it. I still have chills telling this story. She also said, I'm sensing you guys just brought something into your home, and there is evil attached to it. You need to get rid of it. Now. That's when it hit me. The bed. We bought a travel trailer and moved a month and a half later. My son, now six, still remembers the girl he saw. Yesterday, my dad was all excited to finally buy this gorgeous one-story brick house in Indigo Lake, Texas. It was so elegant, refined, copious amounts of land to run around. 
a vista of Sylvian charm. No annoying neighbours, unless they were on the road. We brought all of our belongings and finally came face to face with what was going to be a beautiful nightmare. As we unpacked and arriving at the steps, immediately, strange things started to happen. The protected door opened by itself, and even the grand door that led inside the house as well, just creaked loudly, as if it were telling us to go inside. My dad thought carpenters were working there as it was still being worked on, but only a day or two to finally complete it. My brothers exchanged confused glances and noticed the back of the house had this weird looking pond Behind it was a vast forest that had this sort of small cavern slash grotto, which made absolutely no sense. We were wrapped in complete forest, so it was pretty creepy. We stepped inside, ignoring the doors opening, and were completely astonished with how beautiful the house was. I still remember being seven years old and in awe, with so many things the previous owner left. It was like going back in time. Exquisite paintings, china vases, samurai swords, a chimney with a moose taxidermy above it. Oh my gosh, it was beautiful. To the right, as soon as you walk in, was the kitchen, and a strip down that led to the washing machines as well as the backyard. To the left of the living room was a fork. On the right side was going to be my parents' room. Straight led to a grand room, which we named an arcade room. It was a long hallway to get to the arcade room, and left of it led to another hallway. But what was odd of this was that there was a small shower and toilet, along with a long mirror that coated the wall and led to a door which was my brother's room in a closet. That made no sense. From my brother's room, it led you back to the fork living room, and the restroom was in the middle. The arcade room was so cold. Even during summer, when you opened the windows, it was still freezing. Everyone who came would complain about how cold it was. Dad thought it was just a small draft. We had a foosball table, PlayStation system, video games, mini movie theater, and even a gym in that arcade room. Night falls. And my dad buys the Blair Witch Project. Yep, scared the hell out of me. We were taking care of my uncle's sweet chihuahua named Brandy, who out of nowhere began barking furiously at the wall in the kitchen. She had all her hairs standing up on a foamy mouth by how angry she was. I grabbed her and put her in the washing room where she just whined. My dad was dismissive of the idea that we were living in a haunted house. But that night after the movie ending was something I'm never going to forget, as this presence started immediately to show itself. I made the decision to sleep in my parents' room for a while. In that room was a painting of a boy and a girl on a countryside walk, on a road, next to a man who was behind. I'm getting chills just being reminded of this painting. My brother is snoring in his room, and my parents are awake, and we begin to hear loud furniture swinging and rustling across. The nails are scratching the walls, and these sort of chain noises are coming from the attic with a ch, ch, as if someone was calling a dog. Right then and there, man, my heart sunk, and I knew this place was haunted. My dad gets up and knocks on my brother's door, thinking he moved things, but he's fast asleep. The noises were brushed off, just a raccoon outside, or the forest trees swinging due to the wind. My heart is racing, and constantly thinking of the Blair Witch Project, which made it worse thinking it was real, because you know at the time internet wasn't a popular thing to see if a movie was fake. I left a small nightlight on, and it was probably eleven or midnight when my parents fell asleep. As the night pressed, I dozed and woke up. My parents were sound asleep. The door of their room is completely open, and vividly remembered we locked it. 
My heart is racing, as I know something is really wrong. At the foot of my bed, the end is sunken down as if someone was sitting on it, and I felt it sink down. You guys, I felt it, and I was about to pass out and throw up. When suddenly the covers of my bed toss, and I immediately felt these hands and fingernails tickle my feet. I get chills remembering it. I kicked back whatever it was, and could feel the hairs on these hands. Just massive hairy hands and arms. I yelled. I got up from a nest of blankets and somehow jumped straight into my parents' bed crying. My parents console me. Dad gets up, turns the light on and I'm done. Right there and then I'm crying in my mum's shoulder that I don't want to live here anymore. After consoling, my dad and mum are somewhat wanting to believe me, but they can't. That night I slept in between them. I didn't sleep. My eyes were glued to the door, waiting for it to open. Next day comes, and my brother is working out in the arcade room as he plays varsity football in high school. He comes rushing to us, saying he saw little girl's feet with frilly socks on near the hallway with a lengthy mirror. My dad doesn't believe it, but he becomes a believer eventually. I'm gonna go ahead to share the experiences that happened after. A few nights later, my father is in the bathroom. He had a habit of urinating sitting down at night so that no one gets interrupted sleep. From the windows, the moon is able to reflect some light that gallantly pierces through. As my dad is urinating, he notices my mum is at the door and says he will be done shortly. So he does his thing and right as soon as he's about to pat my mum on the back to let her go, my dad goes right through her, the silhouette, I mean, and he falls over. That night is the one I remember he finally became a believer and shouting at us to come out and turns on all the lights. He was as pale as a ghost, but I was relieved that I wasn't crazy. Water always turned on as well. Bath water, even the shower, where the long mirror hallway was. One time after a party finished and everyone went home, I took a long bath with my action figures and had a huge curtain that covered it. My mum sometimes would use the bathroom whenever I showered, so I heard her walk in and noticed the shadow pass and would just say, Hey mum? No response. So whatever, off I played and upon finishing the bath, the bathroom door was wide open. I came out telling my mum why she didn't close the door and she said that she didn't use the bathroom and was outside cleaning up. It was scary. A lot of stuff went on in that house. We had family friends stay the night to look over the house while we went on a trip. That following night, they called us saying they were leaving as they were getting too spooked. The couple kept having dreams of a handsome man with hairy hands touching them, and he would laugh a lot. And his wife said that the painting in my parents' room was moving. She noticed the kids in the painting moving and the television in that room turned on and the volume would flood up so high to the max. They left in the middle of the night after a mere few hours. We were all painting the fence of the house and saw neighbors jogging on the road. They approached us and told us the house had belonged to an artist who ended his life in our garage. No one ever got close to him as he was always reserved and spoke to no one but joggers would see him with art supplies all the time. No one ever knew who the girl that my brother saw was. Right then and there, my mom called her, who was a spiritual person and told her to take incense and just walk around and talk kindly to the man and ask him to leave. After the small ritual, we never felt anything. Looking back, it feels odd to have been scared Maybe he was just really lonely and in a dark place at the time, and was just playing with me, wanting his presence to be acknowledged. The carpenters even mentioned that they would see a girl roaming around our pond with this strange face scarf on. 
Funny thing is, my mum stayed at home while my dad worked, and while my brother and I were in school. She never experienced or heard anything. Anyway, we ended up selling the house because it was flooding a lot, and the creepy part about the grotto in the back, near the farmer's pond, was that after coming back from evacuating the floods, we found so many dead animals stacked on top of each other. Dog, geese, cats, two horse and owls. It just gives me the shivers every day. The arcade room was still frozen cold as well. I haven't been back, but I would be more than happy to share the paintings that he had in the house, as all of his belongings are in storage. Been sharing this true story with friends for years. Always been told it's interesting. I thought I'd share it here. So I've never been the kind of person to believe in ghosts. I'm a non-religious guy, but I've seen some odd things in my 26 years. But nothing to convince me 100% that the paranormal is legit. However, I have one interesting experience that tends to get interest in honestly has made me question my stance on the paranormal ever since. About six years ago, I was a 20-year-old student living in London. My latest flat contract had run out and I needed a place to live ASAP. I had very little money and felt guilty needing my parents to be a guarantor. So, as any broke Londoner would do, I googled the cheapest place possible, somewhere I could move into that day or the next day. That's how last minute this was. I was fortunate or, in fact, misfortunate to find a place available to move in that day. Contract signed, I had a place to live. I moved into this detached house with all my stuff the following day. It was a dirty house, but the flat occupants were all 20 to 30 years old, four of them in total, and very friendly. The area was quiet and I felt reasonably comfortable. The house was always a bit damp and cold. It was autumn, so it's not surprising, but it was always an unpleasant atmosphere. The garden was overgrown and creepy. The windows that faced it were scratched, cracked, and looked very dirty. The hallway's light didn't work, so the entire interior of the living room and hallways connecting to rooms were pitch black at night. The bathroom was just something else. On my first night after speaking to one of my new flatmates, I was told that they had all experienced weird noises, especially scratching on the blackened window in the bathroom. I laughed this off as nonsense, probably a tree brushing it when it gets windy outside. So after a couple of weeks I finally started noticing weird occurrences in the building. My room's window faced the driveway, and I liked to keep my curtains closed just because it was a west facing room and I didn't like the sunlight pouring in and blinding me every day. So I would close the curtains in the morning, head the class, come home, and find the curtains opened more than halfway. This happened every day. In fact, I could come home from class, close them again, go out to work or see friends, and come home to open curtains. Yet, when I was in the room for hours on end, they never moved when closed. My windows were closed and locked, and so was the bedroom door when I was not there. I was the only one with a key. Also above me was an attic. No one lived up there. It was a locked storage room, I'm guessing. But at night, I could hear what sounded like foot stomping, two people walking around, kids running and sometimes whispers. A bit freaky, but I thought maybe someone in the house had access to this room and was using it at night. For who knows what. But no one was up there. The room was locked. I would sometimes at night go up the stairs to the door and try and get in to see who the hell was in there, but no luck. I never saw anything, but could always hear these footsteps. This part is relevant later. One of my flatmates is a very religious man. I could hear him pray five times a day, and he was always very friendly and open to talk about his faith, and to listen to me stress about the awful state of the house but he himself didn't hear or notice anything weird, other than the unhygienic state of the place. 
he decided at one point to head home to Algeria for a few months with his room locked. After six to seven weeks of living there, one of the other occupants moved out and a room was available. I told a friend of mine that was as desperate as I was weeks prior. He moved in within a few days and things were great. We worked and went to the same uni, so it was cool hanging out with a friend. I told him the stories and due to his religious beliefs, he wasn't a believer in ghosts. And like me, he wasn't fazed by the stories. But he began to notice things too. The same stomping noise upstairs. The scratching windows. My curtains opening on their own. He felt like he was being watched all the time. He noticed the shed in the garden had a broken panel and could easily imagine someone being inside sometimes watching us in the kitchen when we made our food. Routine pest control opened the shed during a visit one day and found half a dozen dead rats and a pile of hollowed out bees in there. Creepy, but no monsters. My friend and I were eating dinner after work in the kitchen one night. I was facing him and the door to the hallway. Whilst he was facing myself and the sliding glass door that gave access to the overgrown jungle garden behind. I remember seeing him turn pale, jump to his feet and ask me in a very frightened tone, can you come to my room? I laughed and asked why. He said, seriously, can you please just come to my room? Please, it's not a joke. Then he bolted to his room, like he was running away. I finished my sandwich with the last bite. Didn't even think to turn around to see what he was so spooked about. Got to his room. He locked the door, sat on the bed and turned on his PlayStation. After a few minutes he calmed down and as he started playing, he told me he saw something in the garden. A woman in a white dress. She walked across the garden half a meter from the glass. She almost floated past and then she vanished. He kept saying, we have to leave, we have to leave. And that noises were one thing, but when you see something, everything changes. My room scared him and everyone else the most. Another flatmate told us that they thought they'd seen me in my room peering at them in the driveway through a 20 centimeter gap in my curtains one night. They said they saw a shape of a person's head, but I wasn't there that night or on any of those occasions mentioned and I certainly don't peer at people through my window. Two nights after the kitchen incident, I'm woken up at around three or four in the morning. My friend is banging on my door and in the pitch blackness of the hallway. I open it and he comes in shaking with fear, saying his bed was vibrating and moving and that he can't stay here any longer. The next day he speaks to a friend who has a place to stay, so packs up most of his stuff and is gone. Within a few days, another person left. A little creeped out, but mostly annoyed with the poor state of the house. At this point, we, the last remaining occupants, are all looking for alternative living arrangements. Remember the religious guy that went back to Algeria? He's been gone for months now and hasn't returned. The landlord makes a visit one day, and as he has the spare key, decides to inspect the room to make sure all is okay. So he opens it up and we go in. Wow, his room was amazing. It was warm, cozy, no damp or cold. It was honestly like a different house. It was nice. I had decided to move in with my partner who had avoided this house the entire time that I'd lived there, maybe visiting once or twice. She hated it, hated being there and always felt uncomfortable. In my last night, I again heard weird noises, but this time in the hall. I was aware that I was home alone that night, as the only other flatmate left was on holiday. It was, as was always, very dark when I opened the door. No one there. I walked into the living room, and the window at the back that faced the side of the house was making weird scratching noises. I needed to use the bathroom, and as a necessity, I had to carry a torch to do the job during these hours. I walked into the bathroom, did my business, 
and as I'm zipping my shorts, my torch briefly shines over the window. I, for some reason, looked as if expecting to see something. I didn't. I walked out of the room, and I don't know why, but I decided to look at the window again without the torchlight. I saw the shape of a large man. I went back to my room, locked my door. All night I could hear foot stomping upstairs in the attic. I couldn't sleep, so I moved all of my things into a pile in the middle of the room, sat on the bed, and waited for sunrise. I got a taxi in the morning and finally got the hell out of there. You couldn't pay me to go back. Hello watchers and listeners, thank you so much for watching. As always a big thank you to all of the Reddit users who kindly allowed me to use their stories. If you want to help support this channel, you will find links to both my Patreon and my Teespring store in the description below. So feel free to have a look. And the biggest thank you to all of you who continue to support me. I truly do appreciate it. And remember... Papa loves you.